Thursday, the last two days of this week. Kind of a busy overnight. Um, we'll talk about the Aussie in a second. China banned coal imports. Aussie took a, took a flyer. First, we will talk about the S and P's because uh, we were approaching these very very key levels here. The high here on third of December is twenty eight fourteen. These highs here from November seventh. 2817 and we're approaching 2800 FOMC minutes last night didn't do a whole lot um, basically confirmed uh, that there is unanim unanimity amongst uh, amongst the members about what we're going to do with the balance sheet uh, also that there we are on hold for rates and basically on hold with the runoff, so we're going to run this off a little bit more, but then we're going to we're going to take a um, take a pause. So this was positive for S and P's, although we did have a move, a pretty aggressive move down right after, um, right after the release. Um, but now we have to sit here and consider what the strategy is heading into 2800 and heading into this 28 figure 10 area. So, today we're going to sell high ones, uh, we're going to sell figure, around the figure, between 99 and 02, and we're going to sell between 09 and 12 today, and we're going to try and get core short, which is what we've been trying to do, I would say, unsuccessfully, um, for the past four days, but this is in play today, so I wanted to show this first off. Getting back to currencies is more my forte. Um, just all chips on the table. Um, I usually earn about 5 to 7 percent of my annual P&L trading futures, which is oil, S&P, DAX, and interest rate. Interest rate, uh, you know, booms and bonds, whatever. Uh, so, 90% of my penal comes from FX. This is uh, what I've been doing most of my life. And so I should throw that out on the table. I've had uh, some colleagues talk to me before, and they said, why do you spend so much time trading futures when you make all your money in FX? And uh, it's a good, very good question. <laughs> anyway, let's go to Aussie. Got smashed last night. Now we're bearish and golfing. China basically said uh, no coal imports. That was a wham banger. I was obviously asleep for it, but if you look back on it, this 40 level, which uh, the North American guys talked about, um, was the big uh, was the big tipping point. So now any anywhere back towards 40 is a sell. Uh, market got caught sort of complacently long. I see some of the guys at HSBC and um, some of the more followed institutional guys have been talking about Aussie longs. Um, and, you know, now these guys are eating crow a bit, um, which is never a good thing, you know, we never root for other guys to get stopped out, but, um, there will be some still, long still, and this is not a buy on dip today, this is pretty serious, uh, kicking the balls for the Aussie economy, so Aussie is a sell and rally today. Let's quickly go to Euro. We have uh, German CPI today, French CPI, and then we also have the Flash Manufacturing Services, PMIs. France, Germany, and the Eurozone as a whole. Um, this would be a big day for the Euro. Uh, probably not a positive day. I mean, these numbers can't be that good. And we've had a bit of a run-up in the Euro. We've had people forgot, people have forgotten um, how fucked the euro is. So, heading into these numbers, the first will be in uh, 51 minutes, the German CPI, uh, which will be low. I don't think German CPI is going to surprise anyone. So, I guess really 9.15 will be the, 9.15 Swiss time will be the French CPI, 9.30 German, C uh, excuse me, 9.15 will be services, 9.30 will be German services. This will probably be the trigger, uh, We'll be looking to um, get short Euro Yen, which we are right now, um, already, and we will 
you'd be looking to sell your dollar. I mean, uh, the obvious sort of technical support here is 25. Uh, we should smash through that on some negative surprise numbers down. Uh, and then we'll see what happens with this uh, going forward. What else we got out there? Um, not too, too much. It was uh, crude. Is just insane, right? 5730. Uh, it's crazy that um, Dollar Cad isn't lower. But of course, Dollar Cad reacted to the Aussie move a little bit, but crude really is um, looks just unstoppable. Uh, at this point, I have no idea what to do with crude. 5790 is your next uh, resistance, and then um, 59 and a quarter. Uh, selling super high ones seems the right idea for me, but um, we're just watching crude for a turn, if it turns, and we'll see what happens. Speaking of crude and higher equities, this one is quite puzzling. Cad Yen just does not want to go up. It really, uh, you know, crude goes up 2-3% equities are on the year's highs. Normally, from sort of global macro place, this would make CAD yen higher. Instead, the market looks like it's been caught long. Um, CAD yen, as well as all of the end crosses now, we talked about this yesterday, this is like a fulcrum here. If we can get through these levels and go higher, um, it's super bullish, but if we fail, uh, this looks like a major top is in. So now we have to go. Because with Aussie Yen's down a percent, CAD Yen couldn't make it, Euro Yen couldn't make it. We have to we have to move our base case to this is the turn in cross yen. So if you're gonna sell high ones, Aussie Yen's your 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 animal today. If you're just gonna sell at the market, Euro Yen I think is your animal. Uh, but you gotta be careful Euro Yen, right? Because we could be surprised on the upside on these figures. So Keep it social until you get confirmation with some of these numbers and how they come out, and then um, you can be a bit more aggressive. The last thing I'll talk about is dollar czar, which, you know, <laughs> pissed me off uh, yesterday. It looked pretty good, you know, we paid 19s, we paid 22s, it's 35 bid. We did sell some in the 30s, our average was like pretty tidy, you know, 14.11. Scratched it. Um, on an unbelievably frustrating scratch. I mean, you know, just take a pause, <laughs> take a moment for that dollar czar chart. Just riddle me this. Someone explain. Someone explain that to me. Except for the fact, I'll just explain it. You know, we all had the same idea. We all did the same thing. Everyone got caught long. A lot of the shorts surely capitulated as we expected, uh, and then the market got caught long, and here we are. Um, 12, 1404 now. Nothing's changed in South Africa. They're still fucked. You saw the budget. You saw the ridiculousness. Um, you saw the deficits. You know the unemployment's 33%. Um, but I don't have a dog in this fight anymore. It's too, you know, the chart looks like it needs to go left now. I won't touch that. If you do want to take this thing left, keep your eye on 1391, which is a 200-day moving average. Otherwise, I suggest your focus today is on uh, Euro and Euro crosses. All right, guys, make some money today. Uh, 